welcome to this uh, first session of the Distortion Series Festival. Uh, As above, so below. That's the title of the fourth uh, installment of this Distortion Series, uh, which is a, a series of talks and uh, festival and conferences that we organize at the Media Design uh, Master Program at Geneva University of Art and, and Design. And this is the fourth edition. Uh, and uh, with the pandemic, obviously, we moved uh, everything uh, online, except with the, a sort of hybrid format and exhibit uh, at the school. So it's uh, in between Geneva and uh, the World Wide Web and online uh, format. So uh, in, this, in these two days, we'll have talks here on Zoom uh, from guests like Sofia Crespo, this innovation uh, later today and 100 Rabbits tomorrow, as well as presentation by our uh, students, by professors like me, Hi, I'm Nicola Nova, uh, and also guest tutors like Sabrina Calvo, who will join us uh, later. So the, the idea of the, in terms of the, the topic for this uh, fourth, uh, fourth episode of the Distortion series, the idea is to, to um, explore the relationship between design and the use of digital technologies in our environment. It's been a year, a year and a half that uh, we, as professors and our students explore this, uh, this topic. We're more, inter we're more specifically interested in the role of uh, designers in the uh, current ecological crisis. And certain number of questions have served as, as a, a brief or the starting point for different workshops we conducted in the last uh, few months. For instance, we were interested in how we can renew our knowledge about the world through in-depth observation and new kind of representations about the environment, uh, how we can engage citizens into understanding the state of our planet, um, and, and basically how we can invent or tell stories about our environment so that we adjust our ways of being here on this planet. Um, so the, the, the main reason to, uh, the main topic for this uh, fourth uh, episode of the Distortion series is to uh, show you the kind of like overview of, of projects or uh, presentation by like-minded people that revolves around this, uh, this topic. Uh, it will happen through talks, as I mentioned, like this one, but also uh, project uh, presentation, and we'll show you how it, this could was applied to uh, two projects, one about the Arve River in uh, Geneva and another one about Lake Geneva or Lac Limon uh, in, uh, in French. Um, so before I move to the presentation of this first session, I just wanted to say that you can ask questions using the Q&A or q and uh, in, air box in, uh, in French in the, in the Zoom uh, platform, if you, if you wish. And we'll, uh, I'll take care of um, like reporting the questions uh, afterwards. So this is the first uh, session after this quite uh, quick general introduction. This first session is called Documenting the Ar Arvine Technosphere, Documenting the Technosphere around the Arve River in, uh, in Geneva. And it's um, a theme that we addressed in a workshop in, um, in January, um, when I say we, I mean myself as a professor in the media design program, but also with Studio Zeda, uh, with Laurent Novak and Camille de Dieu, uh, we teamed up and did this workshop with the first year students in the media design program to, I mean, pedagogically, we were interested in showing uh, ways of observing uh, the world, the planet, the environment, and combining this to designing uh, new kind of representations through digital media to report on those uh, observations. And the focus was on what is called the technosphere. Uh, it's a like, rather uh, scientific term that corresponds to a sort of mismatch between human-made technological infrastructures and the natural environment. Could be like a dam on the river. It could be like different kind of uh, bridges and structures that uh, have been used around the, the river. And that's, I mean, taking the Arve River is a way to address the way our uh, planet is a mix of human-made technologies and natural elements. Uh, I have to say that originally the, the workshop should have been should have happened in, in Chamonix because it's a sort of like uh, I would I was about to say a ritual, but 
more like a, a recurring uh, topic we try to address. But the, because of the, the pandemic and because the R River is also relevant, we uh, moved to that that topic. So in terms of like what what will happen now, I will now give the uh, like the, the mic, the virtual mic to uh, Laurent, huh, who will give you like a, a short introduction about like the, the main intention about the workshop, how we did and, and the sort of process we, we, we followed. And then after like 10, 15 minutes, we, we move to uh, a presentation by uh, three of our students. Uh, we'll have Tiki, who will present the Gaia project uh, in which they explored a fiction in which two archaeologists from the future return to planet Earth and collect information about our relationship between humans and nature around the Arve River. Then Simone Di Mauro will present a project called Dialogue, which is a visual exploration between nature and, and technology that highlights the differences and the analogies between uh, different scenarios and different shapes that they found around the Arve River. And then uh, Mylis uh, Notvoy will present Uncanny Sublime, the last project, uh, with uh, Alejandra uh, Oroz, in which they explored a certain area of the Arve River called Le Platane, which is a sort of like unclassified space where nature and technosphere have been fused so much that uh, they are not really identifiable uh, like individually. So, with these three projects, I think you'll get a, a good overview of, of what, we, what we did. And we'll take like uh, approximately a few minutes for, for questions afterwards. So, so do not hesitate to ask questions in the Q&A uh, box. Laurent, the floor is yours. Hi, so let me just share my uh, screen. There you go. Okay, so... I will talk a bit, I will try to be really brief because this uh, panel is more about what the student did during this uh, uh, five day, uh, three week workshop, sorry. So yeah, it was a, a, a kind of a difficult workshop to set up because we had to be very uh, agile. We wanted to do something to Chamonix, which was not possible mm -hmm. due to the pandemic. We also had the, the, some flood uh, with the uh, and dangerous uh, activity uh, with the arm, which made the, also some situation a bit complicated. But the, uh, the main idea was to share with the student what we do a bit in our workshop, which is go to the field and take some data and try to uh, uh, get some information from it and, and um, gather design knowledge and, and we present it in interesting uh, ways as uh, you, tell, you, you told us very uh, perfectly, uh, Nicola. And um, so what we did is that uh, we showed a bit about what Z1 Studio does and then uh, show some different techniques to the students, such as photogrammetry or uh, uh, processing on images or 3D mapping and all. I think all our, the different students, we have only uh, three projects today, but there was more, which are uh, represented today in a little exhibition in the, in the school, uh, kind of used all the technique we showed. And uh, I think they did a, a great job. So the process was to actually spread them around the arf. So they had to, to go out inside the cold, inside the dirt, take some data. Uh, we had to. We also had to walk and meet them and understand what the process was. So it was a pretty indoor and outdoor workshop, which was pretty, pretty fun. And I think I, I, um, I'll try to be a bit brief. So so maybe I can simply. Uh, um, I think it's easier if I share uh, directly. If I give the, the virtual mic directly to the students, so they um, so they present us a bit the the process and I'll show you a bit behind the scenes uh, images that uh, of the work. So I think we will start with uh, Tiki, if I'm correct. I think I am. So Tiki, uh, it's all yours. So, hello everybody. Uh, I worked on this project, the project named Gaia with uh, Paul Bellon uh, Serre. Um, and as uh, Nicola presented us, we worked on a little science fiction movie. Um, we were located in the historical site of Le Berge de Vessy, 
Uh, it is actually a micro hydroelectric power plant uh, today. Uh, so we thought about going through a pseudoscientific process in which um, we are two archaeologists that come back from the, from the future uh, in order to uh, explore uh, this historical site and trying to rebuild uh, and discover what was like the relationship and this uh, exchange, mutual exchange between nature and uh, human. Um, we wanted to create a synesthetic experience um, from sound to images and to uh, physical objects. So um, we developed a scientific uh, pseudo -science, science fiction mu movie uh, where we <clears throat> filmed the site and collected materials, um, listened to sound and interview uh, the people that were still there. Uh, and then uh, we imagined to recreate uh, a sort of exposition in our new capsule, new world, in order to reconnect um, the human to um, their um, home, our original home, uh, the Earth. Um, and the approach that was given from the studios at Dan was really interesting, uh, as in um, exploring different ways of collecting and working with different data from the physical rock to the uh, radio, um, the um, radio wave. Uh, so we explored different ways of uh, collecting physical and um, non-physical data. Um, and it was really interesting. So <laughs> come see our movie. Thank you very much. I don't know if there are questions for the moment. I think we'll take, the, um, we'll take the question afterwards, uh, Tiki. Okay, so do not, do not, do not and so if I try to be brief. Uh, <laughs> this is good. Uh, we can probably go to the second project by Simone. And, and Alexandre, so like a duo project. You're on mute, Simone. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, our project is called uh, Dialogue and uh, is a design project made with my colleague, Alexandre Ferreira. And basically we try to investigate like the differences and the analogies uh, that exist between the natural and technological field. And we took advantage of, uh, um, well, the beautiful scenario that uh, we found in uh, Pont de la Junction, where there is the bottom and the top part uh, uh, on top of the of the, um, the water and uh, what it was very cool it was like to try to transpose uh, the contemplative and like meditative mood of the place itself uh, into a visual project that could actually give back to the user like this kind of dialogue that happens between these two rivers that actually in the junction then meet each other and these two rivers are the Arve and the Rhone and um, to do this, so we, we started to do our, uh, our, we recorded the flow field of the, of the water, which is what you're seeing right now. And um, we then imported this kind of raw data inside a 3D workspace. And basically the, the mission of the project was within this natural technological scenario, we tried to explore the, um, a bit more organic shape and the motion of the water mixed with a bit of uh, the geometric and uh, um, Shifi patterns that uh, uh, cities and um, um, basically, yeah, man-made materials actually define at the end. And what was very cool was also the signal that we found, which was the, the train passing on top of the bridge. And that is the acoustic signal that will change the scene and will transform the scene from a natural state to a more man-made one. And uh, but to conclude, 50% uh, uh, of the project was very cool to make also because we had a really nice soundtrack made by William Batsinski called actually Water Music. And uh, it was a perfect, perfect match uh, uh, because it was only made with uh, like natural sounds and samples took by nature uh, surrounding. And it really fits inside this kind of uh, 15 minute loop that uh, right now I'm gonna share it to the chat in case you wanna look it now or after. Um, Yes. Okay. And um, yeah, it was it was extremely fun to work on this project and also to mix uh, 
how to say like behind the screen the kind of life with the actually like real world and the nature surrounding us thank you simone uh and the link in the link in the chat is obviously the the video of the of the project the one yeah. we, we see the images uh from uh currently um all right um so we'll now move to the, the third project by um, by Miles and Alejandra. Yes, so hello, my name is Alejandra Oros and uh, we focus in a place that, in a place that was called uh, Le Platans. And uh, this was a beach just after the union of the Arve and the Rhone River in which Simone uh, works. So it's uh, near the junction. And it's basically the point of extinction of the Arve River. So it was quite interesting for us to analyze this. Uh, as we explore this place, which is uh, amazing, uh, we realized that it was a kind of oasis bubble in the middle of the cows of the city of Geneva, because it's right in the middle of all the activity, but you can feel you're in the middle of nature even though you still have the, the rambling of the city and, and the train passing. So it was kind of a very unstable uh, space, we could say. Uh, even uh, if we felt we were suddenly transported into nature, we still could find these traces of technosphere. Uh, it was really fragile and, uh, and sensitive to change. Uh, sometimes we could see more Arve than Rhone in the rivers. Sometimes we could see it was a, a totally complete uh, field with water, but sometimes it was just earth. So um, it was a borderline space. It was in an intermediate position and we couldn't tell anymore if it was nature, technosphere or a fusion of both. So this is what caught our attention and we started to explore it uh, in different uh, points of view, let's say, to collect the traces of technosphere. So we started to see some human traces in the shape of uh, clothes, keys, zippers, and lots of caps of uh, beers. But at the same time, we also collected some sounds of the place, uh, the rumbling of the city, like I was telling you, the train passing, but also the raindrops. Uh, we also took so many pictures of the place and uh, we did some 3D scans with a technique that's called the photogrammetry that uh, Z1 Studio taught us. And uh, once we got the samples, we started to interpret them in the majority of possible ways uh, we could in order to illustrate all the thoughts and experiences we had during this exploration. So we created partners with the natural elements of the place. We collaborated with an AI to create artificial landscapes. Uh, and we, we re-digitalized the physical elements of the place in the form of 3D scans, like you can see. And once we had all those samples, uh, we started to ask ourselves, basically, how do we produce a new knowledge on about uh, this landscape? And we were trying to imagining what could be actually the new sublime of the 29th century, because in this uh, particular place, uh, human have become uh, a strong force and that is competing with nature. And so how can we now as a designer generate alternative uh, vision of uh, this space? And do we, uh, do we show ruins of the future or do we see the place as the new encounter of technology and nature? And so um, we also had a reflection on the tools we used and what, they, what do they say about uh, the nature. So for example, we use the 3D scans and it's interesting because on the app, uh, the app creates a holes behind the uh, the, the landscape we just scanned. And so it tells us a lot about how we conceive the soil nowadays. And we actually, like the tools give us the idea that we conceive the soil as a hole ready to be dug by humans, which is actually not because there is a whole life behind uh, this soil. And so, as human exploring um, this, the place, we ask ourselves, 
uh, can we still feel the sublime of the, the space now that we are responsible for its destruction? Um, and so we use 3D scans, but we also used um, machine learning to generate new landscape. And that is on this image, we used it as a background with the cloud. And it was also a, a, a reflection on what patterns uh, do the machine register of, na of nature and how the, does the machine remember nature and how does it create a new imagery of the nature? Um, how do we do now uh, since we have computer to simulate a new nature? So as outputs, uh, we had a series of contemplative videos. Uh, we had also stills, and you are watching currently one of them. But uh, mainly what we wanted to show is all of our thoughts and all of our reflections of this place, the technosphere, and our effect in that. So uh, this was an addition that we ended up creating at the end, that it had all the process since we started to explore. You can see here in the right uh, some of the samples we took. And down you can see one of the steels, which always have the uh, machine learning created landscapes and the 3D scans. So it was a kind of re-digitalization of the technosphere and how to illustrate these thoughts and views that we saw all over the place. So uh, this was our project. <laughs> thank you, Alexandra, and you, thank you, uh, Miles. Um, <clears throat> I mean, based on this kind of like, very uh, like brief introduction about uh, your work and I, I take the, the sort of liberty to start asking questions because I, I'm the moderator here. Uh, I do think it would be interesting to go back to each of your projects and, and probably ask you two questions that I think could be interesting for, for the audience. First question is, uh, and this is for Tiki, uh, Simone, Alejandra, and Miles. First question is, if you showed this project to people who, who were not part of the workshop, who were not necessarily uh, into like media and interaction design. Did you notice some reactions or what, what was the kind of effect or what was the kind of uh, reaction to this kind of story uh, storytelling? So I'm, I'm curious about this. And the second question I'm, I'm curious about is, I mean, in most of the project, what you did was to set uh, things in the future uh, in, in a way. Uh, the archaeologists of the future, or we see remnants from the past as seen from the future. And I'm curious about this, what's the, the, the value in your project of this? How, how do you think like this kind of speculation could be, I mean, could be fruitful for like creativity, for uh, engaging people into a new kind of relationship with the, with the environment? We can take a different order than the one you had. Uh, so yeah. That's totally. We can start with the last group if you if you want. Uh, so concerning um, reaction that we had, um, I think one of the, the most interesting thing in our project was the question of the tool because when we see installation, usually in exhibition, you never really know how it's made, and there we literally exposed how it's made and we ask questions about then it's made like that, what does it say? And I think uh, it's not something that is usual and that is something that is really important bec because uh, the images we show um, basically uh, highlight very precise notion uh, nowadays. And as designer, we have a responsibility of the tools and the way we use them. Yeah, also from my part, I would uh, I would say that like, as Mylis said, it's like our role is uh, like making, of course, design project, but also how to say certain things, certain, uh, um, how can we express our thought in a more accessible way? And uh, I would share some behind the scene uh, um, work in progress that we did with the studios at the one where we actually, before like half of a project, we were there with a lot of videos, with a lot of concept, uh, everything was mixed together. And uh, like, I think the best tips that came from Laurent was like, uh, 
keep it simple, keep it steady, just one shot in order to let the user enjoy and, uh, um, I don't know, understand all the thing a bit better. And actually, at the end, the output was more clear, was more genuine because of this uh, tip. And sometimes where you are working inside the stuff, you don't realize this kind of uh, um, elements. And uh, as the time frame, as you said, I would just say that maybe our project is a bit more atemporal because it just talks about shapes, talks about colors, about movement and dynamics in this kind of floating, suspended, abstract space. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to share uh, <laughs> this thought. Good. Thank you, Simone. Regarding the reactions when we showed uh, our project to people that weren't in the workshop, let's say I had an interesting experience. When I show Uncanny Sublime, one of the renders to one of my friends, she told me uh, she imagined she saw these images like in a dream because they were a little bit surrealist. But at the same time, uh, it was a weird sensation because you could distinguish nature, but also our traces like uh, the trash we leave behind. So it was a weird sensation and uh, it was nice to see that we were actually uh, creating Uncanny Sublime, which is this kind of, uh, not admiration, but uh, observation and kind of feeling the feel, but contemplating it. So it was interesting to see this reaction from them. I was, I was quite curious about what you, what, what you just said about this kind of contemplation I mean, contemplative um, uh, perspective because it could be seen as something relevant to engage people, but one could also see this as being used to it, and and it's it's okay if we have like this kind of almost poetic representation of trash uh, around <clears throat> around the river. But at the same time, this is very dramatic as a sort of metaphor for the current situation of the environment. So I, I was curious about. I mean, in, in all the project, and same question for the others as well, if this was something that was perceived beyond this kind of contemplation and an aesthetical relationship uh, of the representation. Um, I think for our project, we use the notion of sublime and it's a notion that is used for two, two centuries now. And we reinterrogate it because I think now we can't have the same contemplation as we used to because we are responsible for the transformation of the landscape. And so actually you were saying that we are used to see trash. Yes, but now we can't, we, we can't contemplate it because we know uh, what, what is behind. And um, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair point. Uh, Tiki, uh, what, what about you, you uh, and your project with Paul? Yeah, I think that uh, concerning the reaction to our project, uh, as we, we work really on a fiction, it's different because we can talk about really serious uh, themes and try to, to bring the conversation in and asking questions. But as we are in like in, in the character, it was a little bit different because we're actually presenting something that it's unreal, that we are just theorizing. And the fact that we also worked like on the fact that we didn't want to create a utopian future or a dystopian future, we were we talked about creating a utopian um, panorama of something. Uh, so I think we were more concentrating on the um, the tools, the action, the fact of having like a synesthetic connection and more like it was more personal. So when the people see the movie, uh, they, they felt they felt they wanted to, to experience this nature in, in a way that maybe we, we can't do right now or we a little we, we forgot a little bit about this because we spent time like just caressing rocks and saying and feeling and just writing what we felt. So it was really, it was a different approach of collecting data. And I think the aim um, in everything is just like asking questions to ourselves and to the public without giving, without giving a, a response. I think that anyone like as we're not scientists, we can just theorize and 
trying to to open a, a conversation with with the others and so what i think it's it's really important to have very different approaches like the contemplation is good but for example i really appreciate the uncanny sublime project because you have this feeling that you are seeing something really beautiful but at the same time in your head you are asking yourself some questions and the same we're we're working with nature we're using tools in order to analyze rocks and then you're like okay but why do we need to do that it's it's maybe because we lost contact with all of this so it's i don't know i think that the global thing is we need to keep asking questions even if we don't have answers like immediately and what is well yeah i think yeah. it's something what you you said because uh, i'm sorry uh, to to unmute, I have to remove the keynote, but that's okay. Uh, it's interesting what you say, because why, one thing that we constantly say during our workshop was not to be too much literal in your works. And it's funny because in a sense that you, you're saying that we ask questions, but we also leave space for the viewer to see something maybe he didn't realize existed, or like in, um, like in Simone's project, uh, 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 that's the reality and that's a different interpretation of this uh, reality, which, which is the junction, the, the, the meeting between something very uh, uh, natural and something that was a bit filtered by the urbanism because the uh, Rhone uh, traverses the, the lake. And uh, just by seeing it differently, maybe it will raise the question to others. So this is the fact of not being literal, not be a reactionary. It's a, I think I completely agree. And there's this uh, double uh, double thing. There's your question and the question that you are making the viewer raise. There's another topic I, I wanted to uh, ask you about, so like uh, everyone is the, I mean, it's a bit connected to what Tiki just mentioned, like the, the, this relationship with nature that we, we as human being, especially in the Western world somehow, uh, forgot. And in the context of this workshop, what you did was basically to uh, use certain technologies, like, like for instance, recording, uh, like 3D scanning, uh, machine learning, uh, photography, uh, a lot of different uh, digital uh, apparatuses. And, and I mean, that's, that's something intriguing in, in the way we, we use these devices to reconnect with uh, with nature and there's some sometimes we can feel there's a sort of irony about that but I'm, I'm i'm not sure this is i mean this is the the only way to see things so i'm curious about how do you see all those tools that you uh, use or that you learned uh, using as a way to document analyze theorize understand the environment I don't know if I can answer, but uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I data is interesting, but then how you use it, that's the question. Uh, so I think also that's a big question right now because data is everywhere and everybody's using data, it's data, data. Uh, but then I think the, the important thing is also reconnect, reconnecting this data so on like some some more emotional level. It's not, it, not just like numbers and waves. And I think that the fact of working on this project and being like half in the field, so touching the things, leaving the things, and half of the thing is processing all of this data is just different than collecting a data set and then producing an image or producing a website. So I feel with this like, this approach of being in the field and outside of the field in a classroom working it's like the good balance in order to to try not to lose yourself in these numbers and just having to categorize and having to to make lists and producing something it's there's something more emotional and maybe more that helps reconnecting to the physical world that i found really interesting and seeing that the two together, they, they can combine perfectly, but you need the two of them. And because you're, if you just have numbers, you're, you, you can be lost in them, so. 
there's value in having your shoes uh, very yeah. dirty afterwards, uh, oh, yeah. uh, to, to, to put it shortly. Um, are there any other perspective about this, this question about the use of tools and, and, and technologies? Uh, I was thinking that uh, actually our work as designers is, uh, even if I think that it's ironic also, so like you were saying, Nicola, to use all these technologies to, to get closer to nature, but in, in these kinds of projects, uh, what we just do is to question how these technologies are working. So I think an important duty as designers is to be really critical with these tools that we use and that are available for everybody. And it is these types of projects, uh, the ones that make us question what is behind uh, this. So. I think that's my opinion regarding this. Yeah, I think that's that's clearly a fair point, and that's close to what our intention as as a, as professors. I was just playing the devil's advocate because I do think this kind of it's not a contradiction, but it's more like a tension. It's important to be reflective and critical uh, about it. Completely. Um, are there uh, minus? Yeah, you are. I see yeah. You are. For me, uh, for me, those tools allow us actually to dream about those places because like Sticky said, uh, you can get lost in the data. You can also get lost in the landscape itself. And those tools allow us to take distance and which is like the starting point of a reflection. And so for 3D scans, for example, are, is really interesting because you have the sensation. It's not a, it's not a picture. You have the, you can feel the shape, and when you have it uh, in the class, you start to actually you observe more the landscape than as if you were uh, back there. So it um, and at the same time you are not, so um, so you can reflect on what you saw and what you remember. Yes, and, and, and probably one, one thing that I can comment on is also like here we see Im mostly images, but the fact that you collected all like uh, artifact that you presented them on table during the workshop to see how to organize them and, and use that as material to then produce with a certain kind of formats. The re final representation was also some kind of translation that, that was important uh, for this. Um, Simone, do you, do you have, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if you have a, uh, something to add about that? Yeah, I would like just to add a quick uh, quick statement. If uh, Laurent could go to the ninth slide, I uh, just would like to comment on top of this because I, I as Mali said, I really think that like tools and, uh, and in that case, like uh, exploration has to go hand by hand. Um, but uh, the cool thing was, uh, no, is the, is the grayscale image, the one uh, I think after or before? Yeah, this one. Um, what is this, like, uh, are you asking? These are basically just two textures that we, we scanned and we put together, one of like technological uh, uh, materials and stuff, and the other is uh, pretty natural. And uh, the tool that we used actually made us uh, make like this, this, uh, this image was produced by, by a tool and without that, it would be impossible to see and go a bit further into the exploration and see how the shapes actually, in this case, like talks to each other. So yeah, I think that because tools are uh, usually very powerful, it can be easy to just get confused and lost. But at the same time, I think that if you can use them properly, they really like help you also in the design process a lot because they, they are actually um, very accessible and uh, they can give you actually also inspiration. So yeah, just this. I think it's a, I think it's a good point that you, um, that you just made. Uh, I see that uh, we are now like almost at the end of the, of the, of the session. I, I just wanted to do a quick wrap, wrap up, like a quick summary of, uh, of what we saw. Uh, of course, like taking this of case uh, was, more like a sort of alibi to, to explore observation practices, you know, new ways of telling stories about the environment. But eventually any, any place could be, could be used for this. And the context of the Arve River was kind of important because of its location in Geneva, its relationship with the city uh, as a sort of place of relationship between nature and the, and the artificial. And as we saw in the project, there are like many ways to tell stories uh, about that. Interesting cases to reflect on the possibilities of 
tools and techniques like 3D scanning or sometimes machine learning, but eventually it's, it's design work and we saw like visual uh, like images, we saw uh, editions, we saw uh, uh, films and all of this is, is, is the, the vocabulary of, of, of design work to, to address those questions. And I have to say that this is certainly like a preliminary step before another step, which is uh, related to changing our practices and our behavior using certain kind of tools. But this intermediary step is, is, is very important, sort of the foundation that we try to uh, bring in in this, uh, in this master program with the importance of observation techniques and uh, storytelling. So thank you everyone for, uh, I mean, all the students for their presentation. Thank you Laurent and Camille for the, the workshop. And uh, thank you the audience for, for showing up. We see each other in the next session. Bye-bye everyone.